Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to WCS NA Challenger. We have just finished our first series of five today for our North American group. And as you guys can see, it did go in the favor of Masa 2-0 over Starkiller. But we are hopping into our second series now. My name is Fear Dragon, and I am joined by Nathanius once again. How are you yeah. doing again? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah right now. <laughs> I'm going to get the question every time. I'll give it different answer every time i can dig um, it i can dig it yeah i'm sure you're happy also the terran player has come out victorious masa good old na yeah. favorite yeah as as a part of the the sad terran boys group out there who have been hoping for one day the prophecy of the great terran player who's not korean to be successful <laughs> you know masa's one of our guys yeah, we believe in you. <laughs> Masa is such an interesting fellow because I know that he's also very busy with school a lot of the time, so he has trouble finding time. But it's weird enough that whatever Masa says he's practicing and he feels like, oh, you know, yeah, I've had time to really prepare and I've been playing a lot of StarCraft. Those are the times that Masa just starts bombing out of tournaments and starts doing really poorly. It's when, when he says, oh, you know, I've barely been able to play like 10, 15 games in the past like three weeks or something. School's really picked up. Masa's like, yeah, you know what? I'll take some games off of Serral or something. He's just playing out of his mind. And right now, he's actually he's in the state where he said, yeah, I'm not actually playing that much StarCraft because I've been pretty busy. Well, that's why we see him win. Uh, our next match is going to be a Zerg versus Zerg. We got Pandemir Me. I'll play that if you guys watch American StarCraft. He's he's been doing he's been going around yeah. pretty pretty well. Uh, I believe. Pyeongchang. He, yeah, he was. He had this, the feature spotlight in Pyeongchang. He was there playing. That was it. Was really awesome to meet him. He's a super cool guy. And he comes in as one of those like rising star type players in the yeah. American scene. We look to see him continue on this trajectory. It's not easy, <laughs> but he's certainly on the path to being one of the best in the NA. Yeah, he's been in such a weird place for North America for a very long time because he has always been, I would say, of players that are like on the brink of reaching one of the top NA players in the region. He's been one of the players that has been there for three to four years. He's been yep. so close to getting some big breakout result and he gets a couple of results, but it, it feels like he's very inconsistent in the sense that he will get a good result. And in that same tournament, he'll fall out in the next round to someone who I would say is maybe even an equal caliber player. So it, it's been a really rough ride for him. And I think he's felt it. He's been full time also for, I want to say like at least two years now. Yeah. He's looking for his big break here in, uh, in Starcraft and challenger. It's a good way to get started. Could give him the motivation, the bump that he needs throughout the rest of the year. His opponent, Cicada, I believe you said he used to be Volts. Yeah, used to yeah. be known as Volts. Changed his name because he decided that he hates casters everywhere. Way too many people knew that Volts was a dank memer. He's one of those <laughs> guys. I played this guy in an online tournament, and just because they were casting it, he one base ultralisk drop rushed me. Just because he wanted, just because he wanted to mess yeah. with the people watching. Yeah, he's one of those That's guys. That's very him. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is a dank memer indeed. And he's also just, I would say, he's a very active participant in the community. But what's interesting is he's not as much of an active participant. I feel like in the North American player scene, no. he's one of those people that I feel like is is kind of just on his own in a lot of weird ways. Like he is. One of those players that plays a lot in the ladder, kind of does his own thing. But here we go. We're going to be starting in the bottom left, top of the blue. Zerg player, it's Panda Bear Me from Meliora Esports. He faces off against the Red Zerg in the Northeast. He is formerly known as Volts. He is Cicada. Dank Shrine Pro. Does Dank Shrine sponsor players? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, interesting fact it's now called Scythe Esports. Dank oh, Shrine, okay. aka, who's like basically run by one guy, Toast. Um, started a team, and I believe that he and, oh man, now I'm actually blanking, he and another team effectively kind of had like a quasi-merger, and okay. they became Scythe Esports. Okay. I know that a couple of other NA clans like came together when like Rise Esports was formed. It was like a few clans kind of merged, but yeah. uh, that sort of stuff does happen pretty often, but that's, that's cool. So Cicada, I don't really know what to expect out of him. I think of him as an aggressive, cheesy player yes. <laughs> who likes to get inside of his opponent's heads and do stuff that makes absolutely no sense. I think based <laughs> on this opening, it looks like he wants to be aggressive. He's kind of given that vibes. And he definitely knows that Panda Bear Me is an opponent that is going to be favored over him. Uh, whether he thinks he can win this or not, we know Panda Bear Me has the pedigree of a that, that almost pro level NA player. Yeah, exactly. And Cicada, I think he's been one of those players that has been coming up 
mostly in the past. He's been around for a while, but he's only really started getting more notable results in the past, I want to say, four or five months. So this is kind of his opportunity. He's the rising star. Panda Bear Me has kind of been stuck in the same place for a long time. If he can knock down Panda Bear Me and go to that winner's match, face off versus Masa, you never know what can happen. But drone's already being pulled. Yep, over to that naturally. Does not want to lose that hatch first. We have Lings on the way for Panda Bear Me as he tries to hold on to this. Baneling Nest is on the way for Cicada, though. So he's trying to pressure this. He's denying a ton of income by having all of these drones run around. He's happy to sit there and let them dance between the mineral lines. And with this many Lings, he's trying to catch those Lings as they come out of the Ooh. eggs. He think he just got one of them? Yeah, he managed to kill off one of them as well as one drone. So he's already on a pretty good start with how much mining time he's actually uh, forced to be lost, but yeah, remember his it's... speed is very close to finishing too. Oh man, and that baneling nest you were talking about is so important because that means as soon as the baneling nest finishes up, Panda Bear Me cannot pull his drones anymore to defend against this. He cannot afford to lose any of those drones to those banelings. And there's a spine crawler being added by Panda Bear Me to try and help hold down the fort in this natural, but those speedlings, they are going to jump on top of the handful of drones that are in this base. The banelings are here. He could use those banelings to bust down the spine if he wants to. Breaking the links would be nice if he could get a good Whoop. connection. Oh, uh, Bailing's in so close, and there is that connection. The Queens are still going to be able to stay alive for a little bit longer, but they are quickly losing health. And this Queen gets enough energy for chance to use now. He's not throwing now. There it is. Last second. Oh, my God. Saving Grace over here. He's going to be able to buy himself at least another 15, 20 seconds to get out some more links. Tries to focus fire down those Bailing's. Is going to lose most of his links. So I really like the play he made with those two Bailing's. He waited for the spine crawler to finish so that it could not be canceled. Killed it with the two Banes instantly, and that took out all the defensive wins from Panda Bear Me's forces and Cicada is going to get onto the mineral line in the main base and it looks like we might see his cheese pay off here with an early victory in game number one. There's not a whole lot to stop this and a lot more Lings are coming across the map for Cicada. Oh yeah, those Lings are going to be streaming into the natural, picking off any of the reinforcements. Panda Bear Me already down to eight workers and like you said, I think Cicada able to make this work with that hyper aggressive cheesy style and GG. Cicada Taking game number one. Nice. I love it. Yeah, you know, Cicada has a reputation. You were talking about this. He is known as a bit of a cheesy player. A lot of players, if you talk to them in North America, they will describe it. And they, they do the same thing, actually, for Starkiller as well. They say, oh, you know, you know he's a one-dimensional player. You'll hear that word or that phrase a lot. One-dimensional player. But the thing is, even though Cicada, I think, known for being a bit cheesy, he's good at that one dimension. He's oh, really yeah. good at that one dimension. Yeah, I and mean, his control was great, the decision making. I love the way he took care of the spine crawler because you, you don't want to give them the opportunity to cancel it by blowing up the banelings on it and having it have like two or three health. He waited, he knew that he had enough to destroy it. He blows that up, the investment, everything that came in from Panda Bear Me to defend that was just not enough. And I, I, I love it. And as you said, Cicada, good old boy Volts, <laughs> he's, uh, he's about as NA as it gets. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good way of describing it. And of course, ZVZ is one of those matchups where it's it's not like I would say, for example, PVZ. Oh, you know, a Protoss player goes for like a seven gate adept yeah. all in. Or you're like, okay, if they're gonna do that again, second game, like you're like, okay, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna be prepared for this. ZVZ, you're like, okay, you just all in me. If you do something similar again, like I. It's still just going to be as hard as it was the first time to hold. It's still a problem. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have to go with the yeah, hatch yeah. that fast. Like, maybe against a player like Cicada, you want to try. I, I'm scared to give any recommendations, honestly, <laughs> I know because I, I think uh. Katz is somewhere listening. He's going to be like, Nathaniel, you are wrong. I'm going to be like, <laughs> Katz, Paolo, I'm sorry. But, I mean, I feel like get a faster pool, right? Something like that should yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, no? a pool first or something may not be Brush the worst Brush three spines idea. in your own base. No big deal. Yeah, this is actually one really interesting countermeasure that I've seen a lot of yeah, macro players go for versus players that they're a little bit afraid of the cheese of the early game. They'll actually do an interesting thing where they just say, I'm just going to cheese you because if you cheese me, then we're even. We both have the same number of units, and we're going to have to gradually move into the later stage of the game. And if you don't cheese me, then I just have to get a little bit of damage done, and then I can maybe pull back from a little bit of an de economic deficit from that situation and kind of try and pull back. Yeah. So I'd be interested to see if Panda Bear Me opts to do something like that. Panda Bear Me's best option is to pick a somewhat safe opening that allows him to make this game go as long as possible mm -hmm. because every minute... You know what? No, every second that passes, his chances of winning go up a lot because... <laughs> Cicada is probably going to do some sort of crazy bane bust or maybe something else weird. He might say, well, you think I can only just do like fast speedlings into banes, but maybe he'll have something else even weirder <laughs> next game. Yeah.
and don't want to paint the picture that like Cicada will never ever ever take it into a macro game or like anything like that. But he's it's just, just a... it's just Panda Bear Me's late game is going to be stronger than Cicada's. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing bad to say about Cicada. He's a funny guy. He's uh, he's someone that comes <laughs> into my chat. I've played him before. He always gives me really weird games because he doesn't just do like cheeses all the time either. He'll he'll just do really weird stuff, even though it has no chance of winning. Just just to mess with you. Indeed, but he's going to be up against this guy. He's already sitting up 1-0. Oh, sorry. Actually, the score wrong. Whoops. Uh, already sitting down 1-0. Give it up for the blue Zerg player, Panda Bear Me. Taking that Zerg aggression to the face from this man in the northwest, a red Zerg, Cicada. And we already have it. Look, it's you're, you're, you're spot on, Ravi. He's not going straight into the pool. He is, what do you think he's hoping for? I, in my mind, I'm like, he's just like, I'm gonna go for the hatch first now because you might think I'll just cheese you twice in a row. Mm -hmm. So you'll build a pool first, but in reality, they both just go hatch first. Yeah, you know, it's always really interesting because in ZVZ, it's one of those, it's one of those matchups where you can go for the hatch first and still lead into this crazy Ling Flood yeah. or all in. I feel in like or... we see that from players like Scarlet a lot. Where Scarlet oh, like, yeah, Scarlet cheesed you and then we're both going to go hatch first despite yeah. the fact that we're both cheesing each other. But uh, Scarlet's always a fun one because I feel like, who was it? I think Peely Peely gave me the best description of Scarlet I've ever heard, which is Scarlet will either try to be the cheesiest person on the planet and out cheese No Regret, or she will try to play so perfectly that it's impossible to beat her. And she alternates, she's a, she's a switch, and there's nothing in between. She doesn't ever do like a half cheese. It's always full NA cheese or it's- No Swiss, playing no Swiss. With, it's a full yeah. block of cheese or nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Panda Bear Me is a fun one. He's, I feel like a very versatile player. And I know that he's, again, like he's been sort of stagnating a lot in the scene. And I know that's been a big frustration for him because he's put so much of his heart and soul into StarCraft. He's been full-time for multiple years, something that I think is very rare for a North American player, especially- It's very hard to do that. It, it's, uh, there are very few NA players that w are actually full-time, especially for as long as Panda Bear Me, that have gotten the results that uh, no offense, but Panda Bear Me has. Panda Bear Me has not really been like a Kelazor or a Neeb or a Scarlet no. or anything. I mean, if I think about like, and I, I don't mean this in any like derogatory way, but when you think about like tiers of NA players, you look at your your tip top players are going to be your like Neeb, Kelazor, Major, Scarlet, and then you go down to be like Masa in terms of results. And I'm sure there's some people that I'm missing that'll yell at me after this. But when you get to like, you get to like that next tier down, you're talking about players like Jon Snow, who are very close, but aren't beating those players. And then I would say right below Jon Snow is a player like Panda Bear Me, who's still yeah. better than most everybody, but he's trying to break into that, that echelon of being recognized as one of the best in NA, which Jon Snow now is recognized as, despite yeah. not really having, he's not, not, beside not being the tip He's top. the gatekeeper of like yeah. the S-class players of NA, and Panda Bear Me, Panda Bear Me is like an A-class player. Yeah. Um, but I will say that kind of in an interesting note is that I do feel like Cicada is kind of on that brink of, hey, you know, maybe like working his way up into the higher areas well, of A-class as well. That's what Challenger is. We have not, I have not really seen Volts make deep runs in tournaments. He's changed his name, you know, new, new me, new memes, all that jazz. So perhaps this Challenger will be where we see Cicada come into his own in some degree, you know? We see the cicada unburrow <laughs> and make his chirps as he potentially claws his it way to a victory. It is the season for that, isn't that? I don't know. Isn't Actually, that no. like 17 years or something? Some weird thing. Maybe it's only like a certain type of cicada. Oh, I'm just I'm just trying to associate when do cicadas like come out of hiding. I think it's in the springtime. I thought it was every once in like a really long time, but I'm not an expert on cicadas. Neither am I. Bug genealogy. Oh, boy. Way, so. Okay. Roach Warren for cicada. I mean, this seems like mostly standard ZVZ without the commitment. Like, neither player really tried to kill each other early on, so we both see them get to lair. Yeah, but I'm more concerned with what Panda Bear Me is up to with that faster lair and the fact that he's got all of his gas guys. Yeah, like, you feel like a spine. A, yeah. yeah it's probably, what do you think? Probably spire, right? Uh, it's almost, yeah, it really smells like a spire, and I yep. think that just... He's Cicada, the spire. Cicada is probably thinking about that, too. Cicada has a, a window now where he could just build roaches and probably kill Panda Bear Me but it's so hard to know that and to capitalize on that opportunity. Once the mutas come out, he's gonna be forced to be very defensive, but we could see a situation very similar to the ZBZ that we saw earlier today, where the roaches 
were able to get into a position to deal catastrophic damage by the time that the Mutalisks came out. And I, I think I'm going back to that, that Serral game. <laughs> Okay, well, the Lings do make their way into the main base of Pandavir Mead. They confirm the Spire, which gives Cicada a lot of time to react to that, because that Spire is only halfway done, so it's it's actually a pretty substantial amount of time that Cicada has to react. The only thing is he doesn't really have a lair yet, so it's not like he can throw down a Hydroden reactionarily. He has to just get up more Queens and just get up some Spore Calls when he needs them, and maybe go for this big attack across the map and try and hit a timing before the Mutas pop. Yep, and we can see where he's trying to defend that. We got a huge Ling Rally follow from Cicada. Oh. But look at this. That right there is the lifeline that Panda Mary is clinging to. Four spine crawlers are about to finish up, and he's going to try to use these to buy himself the time that he needs to get those Mutas out. However, the Bane Lings are not uh, able to make those connections with the Lings just yet. The Lings are coming in now behind them. Oh. Most of the spine crawlers have been picked off, and he's just going to try to get everything inside of these mineral lines. Oh man, now the Mutas are about to pop, but keep an eye on that worker count because Panda Bear Me isn't sitting up a ton of workers. If he loses a ton right here, he is inevitably going to end up falling pretty far behind and he just cannot clean up these roaches fast enough. Cicada hits this timing perfectly. The one window where he could have moved in before the spines were done, before the Mutalisks were out, and just in time with his Zerglings to deal with the drones and get catastrophic damage inflicted. This was beautifully executed by Cicada, and whether he wins the game or not with this push, it is, this went exactly as he would have wanted. All he needed to do back home, he's starting up his lair, he's building queens. This was a really aggressive push, but killing the Spire would also add a lot a lot of oomph to the amount of damage he's done. Pandemir Me has zero drones. GG. And I feel a change in the winds, Nate. Cicada with a 2-0 upset Damn. on Panda Bear Me. This is Challenger, man. We get to see a player who doesn't make it out to the events, doesn't make these deep runs, and comes in and sweeps a player that I think if you're a fan of North American StarCraft, you probably know who Panda Bear Me is by yeah. now. If you're, a, you're you're the type of person that likes to make the hipster picks, you're like, Panda Bear Me is going to be like <laughs> the next guy, you know? He's got this. But then it's like, no, Cicada shows up. He whacks him with the cheese in the <laughs> first game, and then the second game he says, I'm going to kill you before you get mutas, and he does. Yeah, I gotta say though, it, like, and I really do want to hand it to Cicada. He executes his strategies very, very well. And like you said, especially it was not just the cheese in the first game, but the second game, a really perfect reaction to what Panda yeah. Bear Me was doing. But I gotta say, Panda Bear Me, maybe just it's a bit disappointing. I would say for him to go out like this, I and mean, he's not out of the group just yet. I want to make that clear. He still does have that losers match. It could make it back through the kind of decider ace match in the end, but it's still really not what I would uh, think a lot of people would be expecting, including yeah. himself. Yeah, things uh, things haven't been wrapped up here just yet. Those are the first two matches. Our next match is going to be that lower bracket match where Pandemir Me will face off against Star Killer, and then we'll get to Masa versus Cicada, which I actually think might be the most interesting match in this group. Masa versus Cicada is going to be really funny because I know Masa's He's been not enjoying TVZ a lot lately. He's He's got some choice words to say about it. And uh, Cicada's looking pretty good right now. He's it's gotten some pretty good results. That Those last few games, his control, I mean, what he did was a bit cheeky here and there for the first game, but everything seemed very on point. His link control was good, where he put the Bane links, his positioning was great, the build choice, the reaction, hitting that window. Those are things that all require a lot of skill against a player like Panda Bear Me. I'm looking forward to see the rest of his games in this match, in this all group. Right. Well, we're going to find out what those rest of the games are going to look like in just a little bit. Stay tuned for more WCS Challenger action here at the Blizzard Esports Arena. This poor town has seen its share of trouble.